This is Slam Hockey with your hosts, Peter Rogero and Paul Twinman. Welcome to Jibble Glam Hockey, folks. I'm your host, Peter Bojarinov. You can find me on Twitter, at Russian98. And I am with... Paul Zwambeck. You can find me at Zwambeck, Z-W-A-M-B-A-G. How's it going, everybody? Peter, what is up? I'm excited! Are you excited? I, I, I don't know what we're excited about, but yeah, I'm excited. Well, we're going to be doing the uh, pre-tread de- 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 deadline show, right? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that- yeah. I'm excited about that. Yep. So stay tuned for that. That's going to come out in a couple of days. Pre-trade deadline show special. We've got a couple of guests, all from our team ISOs. We're bringing them back. We're putting them in. They're going to talk a little bit about what their teams wants or, you know, trade values for the guys that are rumored to be going. So stay tuned for that. Um Paul, let's get a little bit into how did we do on our Saturday's picks last week? Oh, I did all right. You did not very well. Yeah, I was struggling. I thought, you know, I, after like the first two, three games, they all, they were all upsets, right? We did you, we both lost. Like, the yeah, first we three lost or four the first games, right? four games. Yeah, I thought, okay, it's all over. I'm mean, just like, I'm gonna lose. I I thought I was gonna lose every single game that I I didn't even want to follow. I knew the Leafs were playing. I'm like, ah, the Leafs might win or lose, and the Leafs. They had the lead, then they collapsed the course again. Ah, so close. So I lost that one, of course, because you had to pick against me. Yep. And I then I thought, oh, it's all over. Yeah. I went six and five. You went four and seven. So we are 99 and 81 and 98 and 82. You got the one win over me. It's close. It's it's tough, especially with these upsets, man. So you, you can't expect them. In the NHL, they just happen every day, all the time. It's crazy. It's so yeah. hard to predict. Yeah, and last week we talked about going against Tampa Bay because Acha, our team ISO yeah. guest from Raw mm-hmm. Charge, was talking it down that Tampa Bay is terrible, and so I go and pick Tampa Bay because they've been winning, and they lose. Ugh. Yeah. They are the <laughs> death of me. Stupid lightning. Oh, man. Yeah, but Bishop is playing better, so they might put a bit of a late charge into it but it might be a little too late but the other team in the division we will be team ice wing later on in the episode the florida panthers with special guest todd little of litterboxcats.com so you can check out that what else we have this episode we're doing a friendly bet me and paul you probably went on our twitter website at jablam hockey we put out the poll. We try to put out a poll almost every week. And, of course, this week it was which team will win the Atlantic. So stay tuned for that. I've got my top ten biggest trade deadline trades of the current decade. Paul thought I was going to pick, you know, Hosa and Dupuy in 08 No, that's not this decade, right, Paul? Yes, that is correct. I, I was <laughs> totally confused. And then you explained it to me, and I was like, ah, current decade, so... Yes, Not the past I, 10 years, just this decade. So check that out on <laughs> jablemhockey.com. We'll talk, I'll mention a, little, a few of them later on in the episode. And we have a fantasy tip. All right, first, trending now. Paul, your pants, huge, huge, massive blockbuster trade. What happened? It's only the beginning, Peter. We are going yeah. after every defenseman available. Come on, Shattenkirk. No, uh, we need a defenseman. We got a lot of guys hurt. Daly's out for six weeks with an, six weeks. with surgery. Wow. Mata's out for six weeks. Supposedly, they're shutting him down until the playoffs. They're pulling mm-hmm. the whole Patrick Kane from a couple of years ago. Or last yep. year? Was that last year? They shut him down for until the playoffs? I don't know if it was last year. Maybe the year before. Yeah, so they're going to pull that. They're going to hmm. stack their team because they yep. will save salary cap and their playoff team will be way over salary. Yeah. So hopefully they can uh, find something else out there as well. Um, so how many injuries do you have? Did the Pens have in the back end right now? Daly, Mata, Schultz has got a concussion. He practiced today, and Latang is day to day. Our top mm. four D men gone. All down. Yeah. Not wow. Good. Who do you expect to step up? Uh, I don't really know. I th- I thought they were going to call up. Derek Pouliot, clearly he's mm-hmm. in the doghouse of 
the entire Penguins organization. So I have wow. a feeling he's going to move because there's no way this is his opportunity to take the reins, and I don't think it's going to happen. I guess Ian Colt, Ron Hainsey. We're going to have to count on Ron Hainsey. Should be an interesting <laughs> couple of days before we get somebody. Supposedly, wow. our analyst guy, Jason Cormanos, is at the Nashville Colorado game tonight. So maybe he's scouting Tyson Berry. That'd be sweet. Yeah, for sure. He's gone. Tyson. They're gonna. Colorado's gonna trade everybody, right? Yeah, they're they're selling. <laughs> they're they're a big so, clarifier. So the other guys that were traded uh, recently, uh, Stone of the Coyotes went to the Flames. So they're getting some uh, more defensive depth there. And the Leafs make a small trade with getting uh, Kalinin from the Devils for Victor Louvre. Um, I think at one point Victor Louvre was projected as maybe the best Marley defenseman. And it seems like he's dropped down on that depth chart, in, at least for this season. And I think that's why they were willing to move him and to get a guy like Kalinin for and- Leafs. Of course, send him... Yeah, go ahead. And why wouldn't they just claim clean in on waivers? Because they're at the max roster, right? So they got to move a player out. That yeah, makes sense. That's fine. Yeah. Leafs have so many guys in their roster. It's maxed out. It's down Kaneen there. Up going there. to make the team in the next two years. In the Leafs, yeah, for sure. I would think yeah. they're going to just put them in the Marlies at least probably for the rest of this year. And of course, we'll see what happens with training camp next year, and see if he can they can bring him up and fill in a role. And he could be just another piece of the puzzle to be moved if when they're thinking about trading some of the other guys, because they've got a lot of kids they want to bring up with, you know, Kapanen and Lepsik and the rest of them. True. Are they so, getting in on the Colorado tire sale? You know what? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. They're well, just... you're going to have to listen to our pre-trade yeah. deadline show bonus episode. We'll talk more about it. We will. We will. We'll mention some of those avalanche guys and and maybe what the least will do. Awesome. All right. And then also, did you see it, Paul? Did you see the new KHL promo that I, did, I think it was uh, – who did it? It was the CKA. I did not they see put it. A, Oh, okay. So we're going to put this on our games notes, folks, just as long with everything that we've talked about. But here's a little audio. Okay, it's the audio itself already sounds amazing, in my opinion. But it's so cool. They've got all the, the great players. I think Datsu and Kovalchuk are in there. Even Voinov, ex-LA King guy, he's in the promo. It just, oh, the promo is so cool. Of course, if you, ha- if you haven't, you know, followed the KHL, the playoffs have started. And, you know, it's, the promo is cool, and it makes me hyped up even for the NHL playoffs coming up. Uh, but for the KHL, it looks great. Um, and I hope my team does well. I think they're leading one nothing in their series. Did your boy Moziak uh, make the promo? No, well, he's not for their team. Oh, he plays for gotcha. Metallurg Magnitogorsk, and as I, was, I like to call them, the Pittsburgh Penguins of the NHL, because Metallurg is a metal city. It's a steel town type city, and they're also a perennial good team with Muziakin and a few of those other guys when they came uh, when the NHL strike was last few of the good players went to their uh, team and they were a really good team and they still are. So I'm hoping they go pretty far. Is there a team that you like in the KHL ball? I'm going to go with locomotive. You asked me to pick a team and I'm going to go with locomotive <laughs> just, just good. because of the, the storyline from a couple of years back. Yeah. I don't think I've ever watched. I'm not sure if I watched KHL. I can't remember the last KHL game I've watched. I've yeah, watched highlights I, I just... and stuff, but not a full game. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I try to watch a few games, but I always watch the highlights. I go to like the Liga or and SHL over KHL for some reason. Mm-hmm. Not sure why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I, the promo's great. Check it out. It's on jablamhockey.com, our game notes. 
Uh, but yeah, it makes me hyped up even for the NHL playoffs coming up. I can't wait. All right, time for this week's segment of Team ISO. We're Team ISOing the Florida Panthers. We have special guest Todd Little from the Litterbox Cats, uh, litterboxcats.com. You can catch him there. And he's also on Twitter at Todd Little, Todd Little 827. So that's T O D D L I T T L E 827. We're also, obviously, it's going to be in our games notes. You can follow him right there from Jablam Hockey, and we will send this out on Twitter, of course. So, Todd, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, how do you like how the Panthers are playing lately? Uh, it's much better now. I mean, everybody <laughs> was uh, everybody was about ready to jump ship uh, probably two, three weeks ago, maybe three, four weeks ago. You know, things mm-hmm. were looking pretty grim as far as making the playoffs go, but you know, magically, you know, the team gets healthy and it's a totally different team. You know, what do you know? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Is it mainly because Huberto is back and Barkov is also healthy and they're just clicking right now? Yeah, well, right, right before those two guys came back, they also got back Alex Petrovic, who's probably mm-hmm. their best defensive defenseman because they have, you know, they have a lot of, you know, more often, offense-minded defensemen you know, this year than they did last year. And they also got Nick Bukestad back, which, you know, is another, you know, he's not scoring like he did a couple years ago, but I mean, he's another quality forward, you know, so that's one, one less AHL player that was on the roster. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. getting those four guys back in a short span of time has made a big difference. For sure. Um, Let's get into then with the off season additions how has Yandel looked so far? He looks like he's playing well statistically. And is it he exactly what the Cats maybe needed for their back end? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, I, I think when, I mean, the, the Panthers, I mean, uh, you know, like a lot of people down here were, were down on what the front office did in the, in the offseason, especially once, you know, a couple guys went out of the lineup and they got off to a bad start. But I think if you look at all these guys that they added, statistically, you know, they're all doing pretty well, you know, mm-hmm. but... You know, when you add, you know, when you turn over half the roster, you know, there's there's going to be an adjustment period. So I I think I think a lot of people um, discounted that that part of things a little bit. And they expected the team to come out, you know, guns blazing from from the start of the season. And, um, you know, then a couple guys got hurt. And then as the season went on, a couple more guys got hurt, you know. Yeah. And, you know, and when you couple those two things together that, you know, when you when you when you look at things now that you see the full lineup in place, you see like, OK, well, a lot of this was the injuries. But, you know, there, you know, the team did need some time to gel together. Yeah. And um, and I I think by adding like so many like rushing type defensemen too, like, you know, when the team got off to a slow start, I, th- I think those guys were trying to do too much to make up for the, the lack of scoring from the forwards. And it was it was causing problems, you know, defensively, you know, where yeah. the team would play, you know, pretty good for the most part for a game. But then, you know, they'd get caught out of a position a few times and, and, you know, you give up a couple goals and you lose three to two, you know, and then, you know, then that's what everybody's focusing on. But I think once they started to take care of their own, you know, make a make a concerted effort to take care of their own end, that's that's when things really started to turn around. And then mm-hmm. once they got healthy again, now now you see like, okay, this team is actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And is Demers also fitting well on the back end there too? Yeah, he's he's playing pretty good. You know, I, yeah, I think it's really coming together. You know, would they have been better off not getting rid of both Good Branston and Kulikov? Yeah, yeah. It probably would have been better to keep one of those guys. You know, in mm-hmm. in hindsight, but you know, I I think you know I think that's one thing that maybe they need to do at the trade deadline is add one more you know defensive defenseman that can you know that can thump a little bit and and clear mm-hmm. out in front of the net a little bit. It would be a help, even if it's just as a seventh defenseman to spell to spell these guys, so they don't have to put, you know, Kindle in there in case somebody gets mm-hmm. hurt. I, I think that would be an improvement. He's he's too thin on the back end to help them in that in that type of role, I guess. Yeah, uh, but then with yeah, uh, but with those guys kind of playing better, just what's going on with Ekblad? Then is he just having a rough year? 
or is it just, you know? um if you look at yeah if you look at his stats you 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 think yeah he's having a rough year i mean he's got a he's got a bad plus minus rating but mm-hmm. a lot of that's a lot of that's from the you know the first you know but say half of the season now you know he's right now i think he's a he's minus 18 but over the last 20 games i mean I don't know what he was last night. I actually don't know what his yeah. plus minus was last night. But as of yesterday morning, you know, he was minus one over the last 20 games. So mm-hmm. it's been an adjustment to, to, for him to not playing with Brian Campbell anymore. So, yeah. you know, Campbell, Campbell covered up a lot for him, you know, the first couple of years. So, you know, he's had to he's had to learn to, you know, do a lot more on his own and not just, you know, be worried about, you know, providing offense. Yeah. But uh, he's de- he's definitely shown a lot of improvement the last couple of weeks, as you know, as as the whole team for for that matter. Perfect. And then in between the pipes, you've got Luongo injured now, and me being a Leaf fan, we've always kind of enjoyed um, Mr. James Reimer. How's he been fitting in well now with the Panthers? He's been playing good. I, I actually like Reimer. I think he's a I think he's a really good goalie. There's there's a few people on the site that uh, that have commented that Reimer is good until you start putting pressure on him, and then you know then he kind of folds. Which is funny considering you know they lost four to three to Edmonton, and, and before mm-hmm. that I think he had won like five or six starts in a row, and then he gave up yeah. four last night. You know, not all his fault, but I'm just like, well, wait a minute, maybe maybe <laughs> these guys, maybe there's something to that. But yeah. I like Reimer. He's been, both both goalies have been playing good. I mean, there there's been definite times where that you know Lu, Luongo went through a little spell, uh, you know, a, a while back where he yep. he had a few games where he wasn't quite as sharp, and that's happened here and there to to Reimer too. But for the most part, you know, especially while while the team was dealing with you know having like you know four quality guys out of the lineup, those those guys definitely stole a lot of points for the Panthers. Both of them, you know, both mm-hmm. of them did. Yeah, I really enjoyed Reimer because even if he is having an off night, he's a battler. He'll fight no matter what. Yeah, He'll fight hard for you back there. Yeah, I, I like Reimer. I mean, there were there were some people that you know, especially when things were going bad for the team, that were like, "What you know? Why did we sign this guy? You know, for five years and for a, a decent amount of money?" But I think he's a good goalie, you know, and I and I, I you know I see the sense in signing him, you know, spe- especially this year, you know, with the you know, compacted schedule and Luongo mm-hmm. getting older. So they, yeah. you know, they needed a guy that they could, you know, put in like more of a one B role than just having a guy that's going to play, you know, 10 or 15 games while Luongo's yeah. still, you know, starting 65 games. I mean, that, that, that can't keep happening. Like as time goes on. Yeah. He, you don't want to burn out Luongo. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so cause... why is he underrated? Why is Vinny Trocek an underrated player? I don't know. I mean, this guy, I, I love this guy, you know, I mean, you yeah. can, you know, you could make the argument that, the, you know, that, that they wouldn't have been in position to even make this jump that they've made the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks if it wasn't for him. I mean, he's, he's a battler, you know, he can score goals, you know, he's fast, you know, just a really good player. And and he did, you know, he did lead the OHL in, in scoring, I think his last year a junior or so. I mean, this is definitely a guy that's got some skills. I mean, he just needed a, he just needed the ice time. And I, I think, you know, I think uh, originally a few years ago, you know, everybody was looking at, at Barkov and, and Bukestad as the the one, two centers for the next, you know, eight or 10 years or whatever. Yeah. But now, yeah. but now it's Bark, Barkov and, and, and Trocek. And I, I don't know that, that Bukestad really fits in on this team, you know, too much, too much longer considering that. Mm-hmm. With, you know, especially, you know, especially, you know, considering like for a young guy, I mean, he's already had a lot of, a lot of pretty serious injuries. Injuries. Yeah. He's, you know, he's power forward def- type. So. Yeah. He's definitely not, you know, not scoring like he was a couple of years ago, but I mean, he's, he's playing a little better since he came back lately, but you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's, you know, a fit as a winger or as a third line center on this team. So wouldn't wouldn't be shocked if he gets if he gets traded at some point. Yeah, what do you think with the trade deadline coming up? Maybe Bukestad, is there any other pieces that might be moved or what do you think of for Panthers maybe adding a piece? Do I don't they... know. I think I think it's I I don't I wouldn't expect them to do anything big, you know, cuz now mm-hmm. that everybody's back the teams, you know, they're 8-2 and 1 in their last 11 games, so obviously they're going mm-hmm. at a pretty good clip, so you don't want to 
I don't think you want to change things around too much, but like I said earlier, I mean, I think I think they could use a better seventh defensive, better uh, seventh defenseman, yeah. and they could, and probably more more so, they could probably use a forward that could that could help them out on the power play and and, and provide a little more secondary scoring. So those are the things that I think they'd be looking to add. I don't think they're I don't think they're looking to subtract, mm-hmm. but. I thought one of our one of our commenters on the site today made made an interesting point. He was he was talking about leaving um, you know Bukestad exposed for the expansion draft, which I thought was a pretty. I, I hadn't I hadn't thought of that like thinking of the expansion draft and, and yeah. you know um, predicting who they're going to protect and not because the assumption around here is that they're going to lose one of the defensemen, whether it's um, Petrovic or, or Pisic you know, to, to Vegas. And then, mm-hmm. uh, and he said, Oh, they sh- maybe they'll leave uh Bukestad, um, exposed and get rid of him that way. And I was thinking that's actually not a bad idea. Cause that, that's a player Vegas would probably take. Cause he's still a young guy. He signed to, you know, a pretty cap friendly contract and he's, mm-hmm. and he's got a lot of talent, you know, he just probably needs, you know, more ice time, maybe a change of scenery. And I was like, that's a pretty good idea. Cause that way, you can keep your whole defense intact for next season. So I was like, that's, that's actually a pretty good thought. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but I, I hadn't thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds like a good move. If, if he needs a change of scenery and if he's not playing that well, like he has so far this year when he's been healthy. Uh, um, yeah. So then is, uh, how is March still playing? He seems like he's having a bit of a breakout year. Is it because oh man, of- probably, probably the, Probably the best signing of the off season when you're talking, yeah. you know, val- value for dollar. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, this guy's having his best season in the NHL. I mean, this guy goes, this guy goes hard, like every shift, every game. He's, you know, he's a, li- he's a little bit on the smaller side, but man, mm-hmm. this, this guy is definitely, definitely out there trying hard every night, and uh, he's definitely getting rewarded for it. Seems like the new rules with less clutching and grabbing and a little bit less physical, less enforcers are on the ice. It's really opening the ice, especially for, for these smaller players like uh, Mitch Marner uh, and so on. And then for the Panthers, it's like for Trocek and March or so. It's just they're opening yeah, up more ice de- for yeah. the smaller guys. Yeah, definitely something to that. I mean, I've been I've been following hockey since the 70s, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you definitely see that change in the game where you're seeing like, you know, you know, whereas before there was, there was, you know, smaller players like St. Louis or whatever, one, two here and there, like having success. Now you're seeing a bunch of smaller guys, just like really making an impact in the game. And it's, it's cool to see. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Paul, do you have any uh, prospects you want to mention? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to question the 2016 NHL draft guys. Uh, we talked about all these guys, Barkov and Trocek and Bajugstad, all 25 and under. They definitely have a depleted, prospect covered but 2016 i think they did really well what do you think of uh henrik borgstrom uh he see he seems to have a lot of talent i mean he you know he played in the i think in second tier of junior in finland and now he's you know he's over at uh university of denver and from the highlights i've seen man he's got some really nice skills i've seen him score some really nice goals nice assists you know so definitely you know like definitely needs to add some size, you know, bulk up a little bit, but he definitely seems to have a, have the offensive skills. And I, I think uh, when he was drafted, a lot of people were kind of like, who the, who the hell is this kid? They kind of went off the board for him. But I think a lot, I think a lot of people that have, that have seen him play and have seen some of uh, the highlights that I've seen are, are pretty impressed with, uh, uh, with the pick now. Yeah, and then in the second round they went with Adam Mashrin, who I'm a big fan of. I I live just outside of Kitchener, so I I try to get to a couple Rangers games, and he he definitely stands out on the ice. Uh, do you think he's going to be a Panther in the next year or two, or is it going to take more time than that? I don't know. I ho- I hope so. I mean, I I love what I've seen of him because the, the one thing that uh, kind of drives me crazy about the Panthers a little bit is even even the highly skilled guys. There's a reluctance to shoot there, that that uh, that that drives me crazy sometimes. And and that that's what they need the most, I think. Somebody that just has that desire to get shots on goal and to score goals. And uh, I'm real excited about him. And I, I'm hoping next year. It, He's at least in the AHL, and then maybe the year after that, he's with the Panthers. 
Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, is there any defensemen or goalies that are really in the ready to make the next step? Like Matheson already came up. Uh, m- maybe Mackenzie Weger. He's a a late round, seventh round pick from like twenty thirteen. Yeah, he's de- he's definitely improved a lot. Like if you if you would have asked me about him like a, last year or two years ago, I would have said, Nah, I don't, I don't I don't think this guy is going to make it to the NHL anytime soon. But he, this year, he's definitely made definitely made some strides in the AHL, and and I think his future is a lot brighter. And then you have Makashin. Makashin's probably the defenseman that's that's playing for Springfield that. You know, you're you're thinking, okay, this is a guy that's going to be in the NHL lineup in the not too distant future. Um, but yeah, Weger definitely has a chance. You know, I'm interested to see him when it, when when they come back for training camp next year to see, um, you know, how close he actually is to making the jump. And for goaltending, is there anybody like I know they got Luongo and Reimer locked up for quite a long time. Luongo pretty much forever. Uh, is there anybody close or could be competing for a backup role? I'd say, um, I'd say Sam Britton's got got a shot now. I mean, he, because because they have uh, two veterans at the AHL level, and, and Rito Berra and Mike McKenna. Like he ha- he hasn't gotten to play in the AHL this year, but he's he's been like killing it in the e- ECHL. Which I know that's two steps down, but, but I mean, he's been from what I've seen and read and heard, he's been dominant down there. And he did play one AHL game, and um, you know, he had a had a one goal game you know only allowed one goal so I, th- I i think he's definitely you know maybe getting ready to make to make that next step but i but i'd have to say like the goalie prospect they're probably the most excited about is uh montembo who's with uh who's still in the, the quebec league um he's he's probably the, the brightest uh the brightest prospect in, in goal they have so um i, I would expect britain that he, that him and Britain will be the the AHL goalies next year, and we'll, you know, as time goes on, we'll see which ones uh, closer to, you know, making the move to the NHL. But I think they're pretty set with Luongo and Reimer now, so I, I don't see that that changing, you know, that tan, that tandem changing unless all of a sudden Luongo, you know, starts looking his age, you know. But that that uh, that hasn't happened yet, so I wouldn't expect it to happen next year either. Maybe two or three years from now. Yeah, uh, you said Montembeau, and he plays for Blaineville Boys Brand, and they have a good chance yeah. of coming out of the queue. So hopefully he gets some yeah. uh, Memo yeah, Cup he, time. He was he was on Canada's World Junior Team not this past time, but the year before as as the third goalie. But for but he wasn't on there this year. But you know, from what I understand, he's having a, he's having another good year in the queue. So you know, I would I would expect him to be one of the AHL goalies next year. Perfect. And one last quick question. A uh, guy that kind of came out of nowhere and had a ridiculously points per game average, uh, Jace Howerluck. He got hurt at the beginning of the year, hand injury, I believe. How's he look in Springfield? He's been doing pretty good. He actually got he actually got injured here in training camp. Oh, okay. And then when he, he was out for a while, and then when he, I think in his first game in the AHL after he came back from the hand injury, somebody like, cheap shot at him and he got a concussion and he hurt the hand again or something like that. So he was out for a long time in the AHL too. But since he's finally been back, he's, he's been doing really well and he's been putting up some pretty good numbers because uh, that team, uh, their AHL team this year has been kind of a disappointment and they seem to be having a lot of trouble scoring so that he's putting up nice numbers, you know, in spite of that is a good sign. Um, I think he had a pretty, he might have had a pretty good, like an outside shot of actually making the team this year before he got hurt. He was doing pretty well in training camp. So that's, that's definitely a, a player um, prospect wise to look, to take a look at next year. who has got a, got a shot to make the team. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right. Uh, Todd, some great insight there, but before we leave you, what are your expectations for the Panthers now for this year are they going to make the playoffs and can they win a round or two yeah I think I think they are going to make the playoffs I mean as, as long as they can keep doing what they're doing now you know do I expect them to you know to keep going eight and two you know in the next two ten game segments mm-hmm. probably not but as long as they can they can you know keep close to that pace I think I think they'll make it you know, I, I think they're a little a little bit better now that they're healthy than the teams that they're 
you know, up against for the, those, you know, whether it's the third place in the Atlantic or the second wild card, I, I think they're going to squeak in. And yep. I think they're going to be a team yep. that, that whoever plays them in the first round is not going to want to, is not going to want to play in. It's going to have a hard time with, mm-hmm. um, whether they'll win a round or not, I think depends on who the opponent is. You know, if they, yep. if they get Montreal in the first round, yeah, I, I think they could win a round if they get the capitals in the first round, you know, Nah, I don't know. They don't, I don't think they match up really that great against the Capitals usually. Mm-hmm. But you never you know. know. I, th- I, I think they'll definitely be a tough out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we all expected the Panthers to be up there, I think, at the beginning of the year. Uh, but with yeah. the surge and them all coming together now, and a lot, of, a lot of those changes, like you mentioned, it does take a while to gel. And if they're all gelling at the right time, that's all that matters. And if maybe they can make the push, and maybe they can maybe win a round or two. I think they got some experience at least last year, right? So that might have yeah, helped yeah, them definitely. A mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that 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 definitely always counts, you know, especially in hockey that I've seen over the years. You know, you gotta you gotta make the playoffs and, and take your lumps a little bit, and and you learn from that, and you're better better off the next time. So, you know, I think if they make it in, yeah, they're good. They're gonna be. Uh, they're going to be put up a good fight to whoever has to play them. And, and they, yeah, they actually might win a round. And depending on the matchups, maybe they can win two rounds. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Todd, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, again, Todd is on Twitter at Todd Little 827. And you can also uh, find him on uh, litterbotcats.com. Thanks for coming on the show, Todd. Uh, no problem, guys. Have a good night. All right, Paul. My most recent blog was the top 10, of course, and I wrote about the top 10 trade deadline trades of the current decade. I've got a top 10 list. I even have, an, of course, an honorable mention. I'll mention a few of them right now. I'll mention one of the, my top two, and it's huge. It's Jeff Carter. That is my number one pick. It, it, it's, that trade is so significant to the LA Kings roster in terms of how they played the last few years after that trade. They got Jeff Carter from the Blue Jackets for Jack Johnson and, of course, the first-round pick in 2013. Ended up being Mark Dano and, of course, a couple of trades. He's not even there so much. Uh, But it was a landslide win for the LA Kings, which put them over the edge to be a top contender. Huge. And not only did they win that year and, of course, Carter was the had the most goals tied on the team for the LA Kings and scored the game-winning goal for the Stanley Cup. They won again in 2014, and Carter was huge again, as him and Kopitar were the best players uh, for the Kings that playoffs as well. Uh, and, a few other he, ones, and he's still tearing it up. He's third in scoring right he, now. So goals, huge. goals scored. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, my number three was the St. Louis trade uh, from the Lightning to the Rangers in 2014. The Rangers made the finals, and I think it was pretty much on the back of Marty St. Louis. You're trading the leader, the captain of the Lightning to the Rangers, and it changed everything. I think the Rangers were kind of a bit of a middle-of-the-pack team in terms of contenders, but from pretenders to contenders with St. Louis – and with his mother dying and the team rallying with him to push the team all the way to the finals, they almost won the cup because of Marty St. Louis, in my opinion. First, the Rangers and goals. It was amazing. And, of course, in the trade, Tampa Bay got Callahan and a conditional first and uh, a second as well. So, huge trade and was big for the Rangers. My and, and don't forget the controversy of the whole Martin St. Louis and Steve Eisenman uh, over the Olympics exactly. and then not or requesting a trade and mm-hmm. Eisenman waiting and waiting and waiting and finally ended up getting something for Martin St. Louis, which is kind of crazy. I think Eisenman did a pretty excellent job in getting at least something because yep. everybody knew St. Louis did not want to be with the Lightning. So yeah, after yeah, all, it like helped the Rangers, Canada but stuff. yeah, yeah. It helped the Rangers, but also the Lightning got at least something back out of it. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure how well they're, they've done with the picks because they traded both those picks away for other things, other pieces of the puzzle. There's a big trickle-down effect in that yeah, trade. The big, yeah, the big trade tree. 
so, but St. Louis after what happened with Team Canada and everything, and then that Nyserman thing, yeah, I guess it was good that he got something out of training their captain. Um, and then another big one, uh, and it didn't have too much to do with the playoffs that year, was my number six, and that's Ben Bishop going to the Lightning for Corey Conacher in a fourth to back to the Ottawa Senators. And at that time, Conacher was playing very well and putting up some decent points out of nowhere that year. And Bishop wasn't getting, you know, uh, much ice time between the pipes. So nobody expected the Bishop, Bishop to be this good. He just had some backup, maybe potential. And wow, what a steal for Iserman in that trade. And they got Bishop that year. He won and got a shutout in his first uh, game as a Lightning. But, of course, they didn't make the playoffs that year. But the following year, bam, they turned Lightning from non-playoff uh, team to a contender and took them all the way to, I think, the finals that year. So that's amazing. And the turnaround from a pretty small trade, you would think, at that time, to a huge trade and still best of playing really well for the Lightning. Yeah, so. I I really like your two Penguins trades that are in the in the top ten. We're not going to name them, so you have to go check out the yeah. blog. But yeah, I think you did an awesome job filling out this list, Peter. Yeah, um, it's yeah a lot of research it took me a couple of days to figure it out. I wanted to go even further in the full decade, but I thought no, this list is still pretty good with the current decade and you can even see just from the teams that I picked and some of the, a lot of the traits, it's the Kings, it's the pens, the lightning. And a lot of these were big factors and maybe even the Hawks uh, for these teams going really far. And these are the stronger teams that added the right pieces at the right time to help them go deep in the playoffs. So it's pretty cool looking at some of those traits. Yeah, and so, some of them seem so simple that they ended up being so <laughs> awesome. For sure. Um, all right. Uh, so, again, that blog is re- already on jablamhockey.com, and we're going to tweet it out again. Paul, what do you have for our fantasy tip? Our fantasy tip, we're going to go with the last two weeks of fantasy hockey regular season. Can you believe it, Peter? <laughs> we're almost into playoffs for fantasy hockey. Wow. You know what? It's It's been that long. I think I've fallen apart on both my teams because it's such a long season that it's like, oh, I haven't been following you that hard the last couple of weeks. I was, I know it was first in one of them, but I probably dipped to like third or fourth now. Yeah, so I've I've dived deeper into the games per week. I'm really into this games per week right now because it's such a big deal if you have, uh, like if your um, trade deadline hasn't come up yet. I know the trade deadline for some leagues are... 24th mm-hmm. I know I think I have three or four that are tomorrow so I've been sending out trades like crazy trying to offload teams guys from teams that only have like five games in the next two weeks if I'm trying to contend for the playoffs if I'm already in the playoffs I'm looking further ahead for the next March 13th to 19th week because I know I'm already in the playoffs so I got to worry about that but teams you want to Stay away from Calgary Flames. Only have five games in the next two weeks. Um, wow. The Ducks have two in the first week. Arizona has two in the second week. Uh, Edmonton has two in the first week. Only five games as well. So look out for those teams. A team that you want to target. Minnesota Wild have eight games. Four and four in the next week. Uh, they only have one this current week. 20th to 26th. So if you held off, then now's your time to, to pounce on the Minnesota Wild guys. Try and go for like an Eric Stahl or maybe like a Justin Tucker or Zucker, mm-hmm. sorry, Justin Zucker, uh, Matt mm-hmm. Dumba, Ryan Suter, a couple of those guys because they play four games the rest of the year. So they're, they'd be a really good team to, to target. Um, other than that, not not much else to, to give you tips on. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, you know, it should help some people if they're following closely with their teams and how many games are, certain guys are playing. So that should help. Yeah, All right, and Paul. the blog is up on Jablam Hockey as well. Uh, there's a huge yep. chart, and it's pretty easy to read. It's pretty easy to follow. So check it out if you uh, want to dive deeper. For sure. Now time for the friendly bet, Paul. 
All right. Uh, we put it out there for the poll for people to uh, see what people were thinking about. But first, let's get our thoughts. Paul, what is the poll exactly and what is our bet? Who is going to win the Atlantic Division, Peter? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with the regular favorite. My pick is still the Montreal Canadiens. Interesting. I, yeah, I still think Carey Price will pull it out for them. And when it when you have to bear down, he's going to win big, game, big games for them. Yeah, so like the other I, night, I, that, that was a ridiculous save to save that game. That wow, game. and to take them into the into the shootout for sure. Carey yeah. made a huge price at the end in uh, overtime. Wow. Um, and like I was telling you before, Paul, it seems like almost every single night now, there's a save, save of the year candidate. So some of these goals are making some sp- sp- spectacular saves. Can't even say it, but it's... It's just amazing the way the goaltending has been. And it seems like with the smaller pads, they've had to come out with the bigger saves. It just seems like it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's it's a great great to watch some of these goaltenders down. Care Price, I think, can take his team to win the Atlantic. And your pick, Paul? Uh, I think Florida could, could, could move up. I really do think they have a chance. Yeah. They got some games in hand. The, the Barkov Huberto coming back. Uh, we talked to Todd, and he also mentioned Petrovic came back, so that's a mm-hmm. that's a big deal on their back end. Ekblad is hopefully going to turn it around, but uh, even talking to Todd tonight, uh, it's just like, yes, I'm I'm in with Florida. I think they can they can pull off the division. Yeah, um, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of watching all these kids play on all these teams, and the Florida has a lot of versatile versatile weapons on their team, so. Yeah, they could pull it out. It's still a bit of a stretch, but they might be able to. And if Reimer keeps on playing well, too, uh, they have a shot. Yeah, so our Jablam poll, the winner yep. was the Ottawa Senators. Mm-hmm. 38%. Was, number two. I was shocked with that. Yeah, number two, Toronto Maple Leafs at 25%. And then wow. the Montreal, Montreal Canadiens at 19%. And then Boston, Florida, Tampa Bay, Buffalo, the rest of the U.S. teams, 18%. <laughs> which brings us to our friendly bet, Peter. Yep. I think a U.S. team is going to take the Atlantic Division. And I'm picking Canadian team. All right. So you got Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto. I get Boston, Florida, Tampa Bay, Buffalo, Detroit, if they got a shot. <laughs> Yes, well, they they make the playoffs every year. They should make it this year, right? Well, they have to win the division. They they might make playoffs <laughs> or have a chance at making playoffs. They don't have a shot at the division, that's for sure. Yeah. So this is for so, the division we'll win. And uh, update us, Paul. How are we doing in our recent friendly bets? How is Nazem Kadri playing? Oh, Nazem Kadri is going to get hurt tonight. We're recording this Thursday <laughs> night. He's. Oh, look! I just looked up. He's currently got hurt by. Uh, whose shot did he get hurt by? Kevin Klein, sure. Kevin Klein's shot. So yeah. he's, he's out with a broken ankle. He's out six weeks, which is till the playoffs. Uh, he has 25 <laughs> goals right now. Our bet yeah. is you have 26 and over, and I have under 26. So if yep. he gets hurt tonight, sorry, Nazim, uh, I win the bet. And for the other ones? Uh, Penguins players in top three. I have to have three mm-hmm. or more. And you have less than three right now. Phil Kessel is, I think, in 11th. Yep, it's close. Evgeny's in 6th, and Crosby's in 2nd, going to be 1st by the end of the year. Uh, (laughs) So Kessel's only up from 15 by 2 points, so it's going to be a tight battle. It's going to be close. And then our final number of Canadian teams to make the playoffs. Yeah. Peter, you're looking just outstanding. You picked 4-plus. There's yep. one, two, three, four, five right now in the five. playoffs as we speak. So it's close. It's close. So a lot interesting of bubble. bets. Yeah, a lot of bubble yep. teams. So if Florida, it's Boston cool. move up and Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal, one of them falter, yep. Calgary, I don't think is going to make it. So it could, could be interesting. It should be. All right, that's it for this episode. Please go on our website. 
and check out our game notes, especially helping you when you're listening to our podcast. Some cool stuff, especially that KHL video. It's pretty cool. And uh, you can even check out that top 10 blog that I wrote. And we've got more of those coming. Also, we have the special pre-trade deadline episode. That's going to drop in like two days. So check that out. That'll get you set and ready for March 1st, the actual trade deadline. And again, next episode, we'll have a Jablam Junior Hockey update and maybe a Team ISO and some other stuff. And obviously, we should be talking about some of those trades next episode. Clarify, Peter, two days, which is Sunday. We're going to put it out Sunday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Sweet. It'll be there for the the beginning of the next week. Sweet. I like it. All right. Perfect. And if you haven't, again, resubscribe or subscribe to our show right on iTunes, Jablam Hockey and rate and review us if you can. See you guys next time. Bye.